Hey dolls, welcome to another Starstruck interview with me, Adam Starr. Today, I cannot believe my look. The theatre gods are smiling down on us because I am going to be chatting to the incredible, the goddess herself, Hannah Waddingham. I mean, I literally cannot believe my look. Um, I'm so pleased. I got up at the crack of dawn uh, to do this makeup and Hannah's here. How very exciting. Let's add her in. Oh my gosh, here comes the goddess that is Hannah Waddingham. Good morning! <laughs> As if by magic. As if by magic. You are divine. How are you? Oh, that's so funny. I'm good. I'm really good. I'm really good. I'm so glad. As you know, a bit sweaty, but other than that, marvellous. How are you? I am well, Hannah. I am so well. When I started doing these little interviews, I had a couple of people that I definitely wanted to get, and you're one of them, so, so thank you. So oh, stop it. Yeah, bitch. Right, should we jump straight in? Let's do it. Obviously, you, you, your mum was a part of the um, London Coliseum Chorus. So was that your first introduction to theatre or what was the first show that you ever saw? Yeah, no, pretty much. She was a principal at Covent Garden before I was born. And then she stopped for 11 years to bring up me and my brother. Bless her. Stepping away from it. Now I understand that more, you know, stepping away from it. And... Um, then she joined the Coliseum when I was eight and she wanted the, you know, I understand this as well now, she wanted to be in, in the profession that she loved with the tribe that she loved, but she wanted the regular wage and not worrying about being a principal or whatever. So um, I used to just, I mean, I thought that all children went and sat in the stalls of theatres. I genuinely did, I'm not saying that to be a twat. I, because I had no frame of reference when I was little, did I? So, so I would literally sit there every half term, every summer holiday, every Christmas holiday, sitting there watching like Jonathan Miller and David Pountney and Mark Elliott, all these people wow. on stage. And, and I had no idea that, that all of that was soaking into my little, you know, I, I think I was between, my particular time was like between eight and, and 18, 19, when I was, I was just there all the time, listening to where the opera singers would place their voices and just watching all the, you know, the backstage staff coming on and off with the headsets and doing this and that. And it's just, and, and I actually saw Eric Idle do um, the Mikado there with my mum. Wow. And then of course, years later, Spamo. Um, what was the, what was your, what was the first time that you ever performed, Hannah? Was it at a party or, or was it on stage or was it school? Oh, probably school, actually. Yeah. Um, singing with my best friend, Samantha Rappatelli at school. Um, but I, I actually, I was working, I was like the face of, do you remember Pepsi Max? When Pepsi Max launched? Yes. Like the Pepsi Max girl. And I was working at this, um, doing like a, a press thing at an exhibition center. It was at the, um, what's it called? The Business Design Center in Islington when I was like 19. And um, they had a little singing competition, like a karaoke competition. And I won it. <laughs> I went along in my, in my lunch break. It was like, get here if you can. I won it. <laughs> So oh, this little recording contract that, of course, came to shit. <laughs> um, but that started, started out. Amazing. And what was your first, um, what was your West End debut, Hannah? It was, oh my God, it was uh, Le Trek. Le Trek, that was at the um, Shaftesbury. Because the, reason I, well, the reason I hesitate is because I had done, I was the shimmy girl in Smoky Joe's Cafe on tour. Um, wow. Mr. Neil Wright asks. Yes. He says he sends his love and he says, "Ask Hannah what a shimmy girl is in Smoke Joe's Cafe." That's what a shimmy girl is. Shimmy girl wearing a white tassely dress and basically giving yourself a hernia around the country. There we go. That is. Honestly, I was going out with a guy at the time. He was like, "I know that I should like this, but your thighs are narrower than your knee joints." I was so skinny. <laughs> And I was the main dancer in, the, in it. What? That's what? Like, I love that. 
I literally said to Neil, I said, Neil, I'm going to ask her, I'm going to speak to Hannah today. What shall I ask her? And he went, just ask her what a shimmy girl is. <laughs> yeah, um, also, the reason he's saying that is that he used to be in that number and I used to have to get a bit white and tassely in their faces, which he obviously hated. <laughs> obviously. Um, Hannah, the first thing that I ever saw you in was Spamalot. Uh, and, uh... and it's and it's such it was such an incredible show and you were handpicked and then taken to the Broadway. Uh, for someone who is loves musical theatre and does it as the career, what was your Broadway opening night like? Um, well, I would have been a bit more worried, but Clay Aiken, who's become a great friend since, it was his opening night as well. So all the focus was on him and not me, which was brilliant. So I could just quietly do my thing. Because, of course, that first entrance up through the floor, that's quite a thing. You don't want to get that wrong. I used to come up through the floor and be thinking, don't be shit, don't be shit, just don't be shit, just don't be shit. Literally, like, on a loop in my head. <laughs> and I had that on Broadway, but because I literally, there was an interview I did out, out um, for um, one of the stations out there. Anna, I watched it about having a plant put on your head. Yes, I could, it's true. Oh, we got, are you still there? I could have had a plant. Yes, darling. My head is true, because nobody was looking at me. Every time Clay came on, all these girls were like, ah, 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 ah. So I was just like, this is brilliant. This is complete. And I loved it. It was completely irrelevant that I was there. So then the second night was like, became like my first night, because people were like, oh, and there's her as well. But the funny thing is, my dad came into my dressing room, gave me a really tight squeeze and went, there you go, much better than last night. Ooh, cheers, Dad. Um, not what you want to hear, is it? <laughs> no. no. Uh, Anna Jane Casey, this is so funny that they're all here with me. Anna <laughs> Jane Casey, ask Hannah about the mouse in her dress. Have you not heard about this? Nope. I ha right, here's the short version. I've heard the urban myth version come back through to me so many times. <laughs> I was basically on stage coming up through the floor, just about to, to sing Find Your Grail. So I'm coming up through the floor. I'm at like the point of a V. I've got um, Tim Curry here, Chris Sieber here, and I'm meant to move over, straighten my arm out, holding the grail and start singing, if you trust in your soul. And I was like, oh, it's, it felt like there was like, I, I thought I had like a muscle spasm. And so it's amazing how your brain just goes, oh yeah, that's what it is. Cause I'd had physio that day. So I was like, oh, that's what it is. And I stretched my arm out and it was a bit worse and then it stopped. And I was thinking, okay, so that, that's fine, it's a muscle spasm. So cut to the next day and I had two shows and I was thinking, what is that acrid stench? I was literally going around my dressing room like, you know, and it turns out I had a mouse had got in. When I'd gone sub stage to do my quick change, out of my um, kind of cabaret outfit, a mouse had got into my preset dress between the lining and the outer, out, outer side bit and had got up, had got to here and clearly was like bleh, bleh, panicking. And so came up through the floor with me and I either crushed it or deafened it. So I had a live mouse in my <laughs> for one show and one that was dead and stinking for two. Wow. The theatre, there's it's nothing so like it. It's... Oh my god. <laughs> um, one last question about Spamalot. You mentioned in many interviews that that song, Diva's Lament, were, is incredible. Uh, uh, I think you said it would make you or break you if you overthought it. Oh my god. Now, I've listened to that because um, there's a bootleg on the internet. I don't agree with it, but it's there if you need to listen to it. <laughs> and it is, it's all over the place. You can tell that your opera oh my is there. God. So how did you sustain that, Hannah? Uh, by not drinking alcohol. Nice. I had to. I mean, I'm a big gin girl, but uh, I had to abstain. And I, I could feel it. If I'd had one glass of wine or gin or whatever, I'd feel it. And I would stand. It was, and it was, it was deepest lament more than anything else. I always had my top of my voice, but... If the, the belt, the belt is where I don't like belting at all. I've never liked belting. 
And and if I'd had a drink, that's what would go. And I was standing in the wings just going, what are you doing? It's not worth it. It's not worth it, you idiot. So I try and sing songs like that as little as possible because they're just in that place in your voice. It's exciting for for people to listen to. Yeah. I don't find pleasurable to sing. And yeah. as I'm older, I've just been a bit like, no. <laughs> if people go, can you, can you sing that? I'm like, no, let me let me offer you this one instead. Oh. And in the clown, let's try this. Exactly. Let's have a very, very heartfelt send of the clowns. Being in the Wizard of Oz, the play, Jim. Hannah, is it easy being green? Uh, I love being green, but when every time we did like a run through with a different bunch of kids, and I didn't have to be green, I did. I just think, oh my god, being green is a nightmare. About thirty percent of the job is is the job, and the rest of it is effing green. Yeah, it's green. Oh. Being god and also bear in mind i shot myself in the foot because they said do you want someone else to be miss gulch do you want your cover to be miss gulch or do you and i was like no 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 because the the witch the the miss gulch is the germ that the witch comes from it has to be me i ha i have to have it i have to have it being me for my own you know and it meant that i was miss gulch just with all the, the prosthetics but flesh color for a one minute and 30 second scene. Then no, cleaning myself up to de-green on a two show day to re-green. No, no thank you. Uh, another famous witch you played was The Witch Into The Woods. And Hannah, that is, I mean, for someone who looked- I loved it. It is that, that I'm so glad it was recorded so I could watch it, I could, you could yeah, watch it. Yeah, I'm so pleased I did that. Um, Playing that part and the song uh, Studying Stephen, that song, The Last Midnight, what did you, how did you portray that song through your witch? What did, what was the idea? For me, about? It was uh, the fact, the irony that all those people in that world think that they are right and virtuous. And the only person that's actually speaking the truth is the person that people demonise. Lovely. That's great. Yeah, and it was what did it for me. You know, the line, oh, well, you can blame another witch. Let's just apportion blame to everyone else always yeah. for our actions when it's you people that are making the mess of your lives and everyone else's. I mean, you were brilliant in that role, doll. You play Sometimes Women so well. You also played Le Desiree in Little Night Music. Oh, you know. I loved her. She's my favourite role ever. I mean, Steve, uh, Steve, I mean, like, like he's here. Stephen's favourite role is Desiree, he says, like he's mentioned it a few times. Yeah. Um, that song, Sending the Clowns, can be... Overdone to death. Bingo. But see, again, naughty, naughty, it's online. But your rendition is full of pathos and yearning. Thank and you. you. Dog, you don't thank me. You can, I can, even though I'm not in the audience, you can feel it. So when you are singing that song, what is going through your head, Hannah? Um, I think perhaps when, when I went in for it, uh, I was in for the Countess and Trevor, suddenly he was literally walking around me while I was singing. He was walking That's around. That's Trevor Nunn, Trevor Nunn. Sorry, yes, Trevor Nunn. And I, he was walking around me and I was like, and he was like, no, 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 so cool. And, and he got it into his head that, that we were going to do it because um, the film Smiles of a Summer Night, I was like the dead spit of the original woman in the film. And he so he aged the whole production down, which I was so humbled by. But when I sang through that song, he came up to me at the end and he said, whoever it is that has hurt you and made you feel like you need to pick yourself up and try and carry on, I'd quite like to thank them in this moment and we will make good use of that pain. I mean, doll. And it was true because at the time I did use it as, as some sort of a catharsis yeah. um, for a bad breakup. Um, and I think sometimes being a strong person, being a strong woman, often, and I don't mind saying it at all, the men that I've had in my life have presumed that you are that all the time. And so they get a bit more, not physically punchy, thankfully, but they get a bit more punchy with their behavior yeah. and and I fell foul of that and, and was very verbally abused by um, a boyfriend and I'd got myself out of it not long before that wow. and so it was that thing with Desiree of looking like everything is fine but underneath if you were to touch her she'd shatter 
I, and that, so I went through every single line of that song, which I knew was done to death, which I had always avoided. And I found the catharsis in it. And the thing that just was amazing for me was Stephen Sondheim coming up to me, squeezing my hand and saying, you made me cry, my dear. And it was from the heart and I felt, I felt you feeling it. Um, and that was what, what made it for me. And I, I used to find it such a catharsis every time I sang it, actually. I just hear the opening chords and my heart goes, <laughs> I think that is what you said is exactly how when, when watching it as an audience member, when he turns away and leaves, you don't, oh. you don't do that. You're not like a, uh, you can just see here. You can like, holy, that's acting everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, but the line that used to get me that he would say is, um, you know, basically saying just because, just because I love you doesn't mean I love this young girl any less. And the realization at that moment, has your screen gone dull or is it just mine? No, dull, just yours, just give it a Um The realization that he's the love of her life and she has to find a way through to keep going without him. Yes. Oh, it's heartbreaking. It is. Uh, speaking of strong women, kiss me Kate. Right. Hannah Wadigan, there is nobody, repeat, nobody can wear costumes like you. You. Ow! <laughs> when we met at the Olivier Awards, that gorgeous black dress, you didn't, the dress didn't wear you, you wore the dress. The same with all the costumes. Play, and there's a lovely quote, which is, Hannah Wadigan in this production is highly kissable, and I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Being playing that role, I mean, for a homosexual man's prize, that role is a dream. Oh, I hate men, dream. anguish, anguish the, the drama, the costume. What yeah. was your fondest memory of that production? Um, Alex Bourne, I think. He and I were, I mean, he would literally, we would always have our, I always have a bit of a policy with, with shows that I do, that I always leave my dressing room door open. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm changing, I always leave my door open so that everyone can just muck in and never laugh about her. Um, and he and I used to leave our doors open and he used to go, Waddingham, can we please not have a proper full on fight today on set? Like, can we just rein it in a bit? Because he and I used to have to get quite, you know, yep. kinky punchy. And we were both bruised and battered. <laughs> like one day I'd had enough of him whinging. I went, do you want an Olivier nomination or not? <laughs> <laughs> and what did he do? He got one. He got one, babes. So I went into his room and I was like, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. It's the punching. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you, how do you learn to be a leader of a company, Hannah? Because obviously you played so many roles that are the are the lead are the lead role in effect. You know what? I think just by just by um, never allowing there to be any hierarchy, I can't bear it. Same with um, TV shows, when they when the when the person or people that are the leads in something, if they don't allow it, then it doesn't allow it anywhere anywhere else. Got it. And I've always conducted myself in a way that I would want my seniors to conduct themselves. Um, so even things like Wizard of Oz, even though Michael Crawford was our senior, um, you know, he was fairly removed and doing his own thing. So I took up that mantle and was a bit like, you know, if we're going to organise anything, we do it. I mean, I'm not saying that I was like, um, you know, school rep type no. thing. But I, but I like it that anyone and everyone feels like that. I don't, I don't like hierarchy. I've never liked it. In fact, I, I realised this when I went from the West End production of Spamalot to Broadway. In the West End one, you know, I'd get my Primark little toweling thing on and have my skull cap on and my crappy old Crocs and all the rest of it. And I'd be going in the crew room and going up to the girls' change room and just, I don't care who anybody is in any department, none of us can do any of it without the other one. Exactly. Period. And I went to Broadway and expected to just be able to go and knock on the on the ensemble girls' door. And they were like, are you okay, ma'am? Do you have everything you need? And I was like, yes. Like, yes. <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted, yeah. It's lonely out there. I want friends. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't need all that. I've never needed all that kind of hierarchy. But, but they'd obviously been used to the leading lady being a bit more removed and... 
but I, I, I've just got no time for that. I've got no time for thinking, oh, this person is this, this person is that, so I'm going to treat them differently. I can't bear it in others. You have been in, I mean, you cannot switch on the television, Hannah, without you being in sex education, which <laughs> is glorious. Isn't it great? Aren't the kids? Oh, are they Hannah, three days. No sleep, three days. All the I way really it. Uh, for someone, I mean, don't kill me. I have not watched Game of Thrones all the way through, but the only thing I do know is, is that Jack, I'm Jack. in it. <laughs> the, <laughs> the only thing I do know is shame, shame, shame. You are a meme. You're everywhere. I mean, you're referenced in uh, uh, Family Guy, everywhere. Incredible. The funny uh, thing about the Family Guy thing when we were filming it. With, with me and Lena Headey that plays Cersei, I was just like, how funny would it be if I was behind you going, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> 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 oh, they nicked it. Buggers. Um, of course, you are, I mean, Hannah, in Benidorm, I mean, I was ready to turn. Stunning. <laughs> she was... You know she what? The only reason why I was in such good shape was because I had just finished Kiss Me Kate that nearly killed me physically. I used to come off stage from doing all the fighting with Alex. He'd chuck me over his... No, I'd have to sing like high operatic trilling soprano, get the hump with him, try and whack him. He'd carry me off and I'd be in the wings going... <gasps> <laughs> I straight away went out to Benidorm and started shooting that. So that's why, I mean, I even conceived myself. I'm looking quite good in bikini there. You do... You do. But that was from that. Trust me, that is not <laughs> there anymore. Speaking to Jenna Boyd, who you did Les Mis with, yeah. um, for someone who I couldn't wait to meet you at the Olivier Awards, I was like, I said to Neil, I said, I remember saying to Neil, Neil, let's have a walkabout, because like, I don't want, I want to go and walk back to you and see her. She went, oh, that's yeah. Hannah. I know who she is. <laughs> and he's like, well, she's my mate. I was like, okay. Um, so tell me the story about you trying to get a picture with uh, Russell Crowe. Oh my God, what a grumpy bugger he was. Crikey Moses. Well, we'd been told to not make eye contact with him. <laughs> Up to him and I was like, hello. Hello. Hello, Russell. <laughs> Are you ready for your quick fire questions, Hannah? What? You ready for your quick fire questions? Oh God, oh God, oh God. Not really. Come They're not on. scary, I promise. Okay. What are the digits of your security code? <laughs> <laughs> Hot or cold? What, but what, what, in what, for what? Food? Anything. Oh, uh, hot. Walk or run? Walk, ops. <laughs> Bevel. Uh, dance or sing? Sing. Give or receive? Give. Meat or veg? Veg. Meet um, night in or night out? Night out! Coffee or tea? Coffee. Play a musical? Uh, oh, I have to say musicals. <laughs> Ooh, Lily Savage or RuPaul? Ooh, Lily. Cats or dogs? Dogs all day, every day. Beyonce or Celine? Celine. Hugs or kisses? All of it! Day or night? Night. Sun time or weather? Sun time. Uh, Peters or Lapone? Peters. Best performance that you've ever seen live in a musical? Zubin Vala in Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> uh, go to showers. Followed by Elena Roger. Elena. In what? Yeah, in Pia. Yeah. Killed me. Um, go to shower song. I, I, city I remember. I, I, dancing in September. Yeah. Dream yeah. role, and it can't be a And when there's a new one made, you, a, a, an existing role. Probably Miss Hannigan. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, biggest unsafe I mishap? Be, I need to be with um, Albert Finney. What? Biggest what? Biggest what? Biggest unsafe mishap? Uh, probably, well, well, either the mouse in my dress or completely stacking it on Broadway with blood pouring down my shins. 
Was that in Spamalot as well? Yes. Mm. And the whole uh, audience went, ooh. Mm. Karen, I'm dancing. Uh, <laughs> favorite costume that you've ever worn? All of them in Spamalot. Because they were a 50 million billion pounds, all handmade glass beads. Wow. And when I was almost going to get married, stupidly, for five minutes, every wedding dress I tried on, I was a bit like, no. <laughs> um, go to cast album right now. Uh, oh, um, I don't really listen to cast albums. That's fine. Uh, favourite sweet? Um, old school cola cube. All the way. Month of the year? July. Favourite sound? My little girl crying. Look crying. My little girl laughing. <laughs> Imagine crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, little girl, my little girl absolutely pissing herself laughing. Is Love that. Fun. Favourite smell? Um, Christmas trees. Favourite drink? Gin. Favourite movie? Oh, God. Oh, I've got to go with... It's got to be Dirty Dancing. Lovely. Hannah Wondergum, I've created a time machine. Me and you are in this time machine. Yeah. We've got two front row tickets to the opening night of any musical ever made. What are we seeing? Oh, oh my God, the pressure. What are we seeing? Fossey. <laughs> No, what? Oh, oh my God. Okay, so if it was me, so I'll take, we'll go, go for on. a matinee first, and I'll take you to see Barbara Strys and your funny girl at the Winter Garden. Oh my God. I think I'd just cry. Um, Cheetah Rivera. Kiss of a Spider Woman? Yes. I'd have to, I'd have to go for Cheetah Rivera and Spider Woman. Definitely. Really gorgeous woman. Definitely. Oh, 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 Hannah! This is this. I'm so I'm so so grateful you're doing this. Honestly, doll, you're you're one of the people that I'm going to tick off. That I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you could do it. So we could chat. Oh, bless you. You're welcome, doll. Um, long may you reign. You're in a gorgeous Apple TV show right now. Um, Ted Lasso on Apple. Yeah, we renewed you. for season two. Woo! 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 Campus yeah. kids, blonde hair, living your best life. Yeah. Um, last we, question. The clothes that are so expensive that you have to give back, and you think, no! <laughs> you have to give them back! Who are they? these? They're like, no, no, no. They're saying as part of her wardrobe. Are they? Are they? Are yeah. they? Last question, Hannah Wondergan, before I let you go and live your lovely day. What would be the name of your autobiography? Um, Hannah Wondergan. Never knowingly classy. Hannah, I adore you. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. This has been great. Thank you. And we will play when all this bollocks is over. We shall indeed. With Neil, when he comes with yes. us. Oh, that man. I oh, know. <laughs> right. Love you, lady. All right, darling. Bye. Bye.